Hey everybody, I thought I'd introduce myself officially. Today we're going to talk about the gravity driven generator. My name is Jerry. You might have seen me on one other video that I've done for some gift cards. Uh, today we're going to talk about a freewheel. That's what this is. Okay, that's a freewheel. Okay, this is for bicycles in America. It's a uh, number 40 sprocket, okay? And you can hear that thing clicking away. This is made by White Industries. You can check it out on their website, whiteindustries.com. I bought this one on eBay a little bit used because it's a little bit cheaper. And uh, these are some really high quality freewheels. I also have an adapter here. Okay, it's a threaded adapter. It might be kind of hard to see with this video, but it's a threaded adapter right there. Okay. This is made by Stanton. Staten out of Oklahoma City and they do a lot of different uh, bike, bicycle parts and and this this threads into this okay threads right in there okay and that is going to go on to the shaft the transfer shaft that's over here to my right okay so I'm going to try to move the camera over there and let you see see how that's going to go for right now I'm just going to talk about this Last time I, in the previous video, I talked about this little device right here. This is, of course, a sprag clutch. And I also mentioned how expensive it is, so I decided to try out some, do some research and figure something else out. Now, the sprag clutch can handle, um, you know, a lot of torque, you know, seven, eight hundred pounds of torque, depending on which kind you get. This freewheel, it's a good one, but it can't handle that kind of torque. So I had to come up with some innovative idea. And as it turned out, it really was a simple solution. I'm going to talk about that right now, okay? So I'm going to move the camera and um, show you what I got going on, okay? So just hang on with me here. Now the lighting in here as usual stinks, but let me see if I can get it a little closer here. Okay. You would think by now they have all this professional gear and all this, but no, that's not the case. Okay. So, get that out of the way. Right there, that little device you're seeing at on the, right on the transfer shaft. This right here is a sprocket holder, okay? And so is that one right there. All right? So what we're gonna do is, where that sprocket holder is right now, we're gonna put this, okay? With the adapter. The adapter allows this freewheel to slide on to that shaft and lock into it. Let me see if I can get over there. Let me turn the, uh, turn the camera around a little bit so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. Still can't quite tell what's going on here. Let me turn this up a little bit. All right. So, this is a freewheel. I mean, I'm sorry, this is a sprocket holder. This is the freewheel that's going to go in its place. Okay. Right. Now let me turn this over here a little bit. Let me bring the camera around over here so you guys can see what I'm see something else a little bit different so I can show you exactly how it's gonna lock onto the shaft, okay? Now that right there is the end of the shaft sitting in a bearing. Okay? So this is the bearing. This shiny looking piece. This is just a shaft collar. You can kind of ignore that for now. And right here is a keyway, and I happen to have a key sitting in there right now. This is a key. Okay, a little piece of rectangular metal. And they sell these. This is a quarter inch key. Now, you may not be able to tell very easily in this video, but there's a keyway right here. And this key slides right in there. Okay. Now, the way this works is I'm going to put the I'm going to thread in 
the adapter into the freewheel. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So it's threading in there. Okay. Kind of got the camera screen backwards, upside down. It's hard to tell what I'm doing, but anyway. Okay, so that thread's right in there. Okay. And then there is right here, right there is a keyway inside this adapter. And that's going to match up to the keyway on this shaft. Okay. So this key, keyway, and this keyway are going to lock into each other with this key that's sitting in there right now. Okay. There it is. Slide that in there like that. So I'm going to join them together, match up the keyways. Okay. And now you'll notice when I go in one direction, the shaft is going to turn a little bit. Now, let me get the adapter tightened down a little bit. As you'll notice in the background, you probably see this chain moving around here. Okay, there's a chain right here. You'll notice moving around. That's because I'm putting pressure right here. I'm going down. Okay. So the whole shaft is moving. So in that direction, the freewheel is locked with the inner race. The outer and inner race on this freewheel are locked together. Okay, if I go the other way, listen. Freewheel action. That's what we want. Now this is going to in, eventually end up being um, at that sprocket holder I talked about, which is, let's see if I can get the camera to go over there a little bit. Okay. Kind of hard to do this with one hand while I'm doing the other. Anyway, let's see. Yep, right there. So that is going to get replaced by that free well showing you. Okay. And the reason why I believe it's going to work there is because the torque down here at this spot is going to be much lower. Okay. I actually I think I'm going to move it way over to that one. Sorry, I'm going to put it over there. Okay. And the, the torque demand over at this sprock where this uh, sprocket holder is and where that sprocket's going to be on there is where I think I'm going to put that freewheel. Okay. And the torque demand's much lower. It's like maybe 160 pound, uh, pound feet. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that sprocket holder is going to, I mean, that freewheel right there is going to be able to handle that. Okay. Should be able to handle it. Now, one of the issues that, uh, that uh, I have to I'm confronted with is that this is called a number 40 sprocket. Okay. So give me one second. I'm going to show you what I'd, the sprocket I'm working with. All the sprockets I use on this project are 35 sprocket. Okay. And that's what that is. All right. So let me take the freewheel off the uh, off the shaft, show what we got going on here. Okay. This one is a 35. And you'll notice that the teeth on the one right here that I'm moving, the teeth are closer than, than the freewheel. Okay. So this the one that I'm moving right now, the freewheel, that's for bicycles in America. This is not found on bicycles. This is more go-karts and stuff like that, okay? And the reason I chose 35 sprocket and 35 chain is because more teeth gives me um, more control over the gear ratio. The more teeth I have, the more gear ratios I can choose and the higher gear ratios I can choose. So that's really important because the 40 chain, which when I did this, started this project a few years ago, I found out real fast with some mathematics that this was not going to work because I, I would have really huge sprockets, okay? It wasn't going to give me, it's not practical, okay? So what I have to do is to get this freewheel to work with this sprocket is to take this from that side, put it in that hole like that, okay? And then I'm going to bolt, drill some holes all around here, okay? See if I can hold that up. Okay, drill some holes in this little freewheel, like four of them, okay, in different spots. Match them up to some other holes that I got to drill down here, not the ones you see now, but they're going to be underneath there more, right? 
and match it up to this free wheel. And then when the, the little free wheel turns, whichever way it turns, the big sprocket will turn with it. Okay? And that's how I'm going to get the 35s to work as a free wheel. And I've seen this used, I've actually done it before when I had the bicycle wheel as my winding wheel. And I've seen other people use it too um, with bicycle projects and mostly with motor, motorized bicycles, which is actually a bigger industry than you'd imagine. Okay. So I want to show that with you guys. This is going to work out really well. The free wheel, I can't remember how much it cost me. I think it was, um, gosh, I want to say 50 bucks, I think, plus a little bit of shipping. Maybe, maybe $55, okay? And the adapter, which you saw me screw in there earlier, I think that cost me 12 bucks, $11, plus a little bit of shipping. So all in all, it was, it was well under 100 bucks, which is still a lot of money, but it's a lot better than a few thousand dollars, right? That I was gonna have to spend on the spray clutch. So this, is, I believe, is gonna work out really good. And the next thing I'm gonna start doing is getting the uh, parts together and all the material together for the, the big winding wheel. And uh, I'm gonna have to lay that out and get, get some design going on that. So so this, this is a pretty cool progress moving forward on this. This is a, a big discovery for a little money. So I hope you guys appreciate this video. Uh, I appreciate you tagging along. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys, because it really makes a big difference for me. Thumbs up, give me the likes. And then, you know, I love to hear comments too. Some of you guys in the past have commented, but don't be afraid to comment because I really enjoy it. I definitely respond to all the people that comment, okay? All right, guys. God bless you, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.